Yes, please, please ask your questions. Um, we'll definitely leave some time at the end for any specific questions that I can try to help with, but any sort of Zoom uh, housekeeping kinds of things, uh, uh, Sharish will uh, oh, answer in the chat. So give me just a moment to share my screen. Okay, there we go. Excellent. Are you seeing my screen now? Yes. Okay. So one of the very first things I want to do is I just want to go online and do a little preview of the digital. And one of the first things I'm going to recommend, um, and again, um, I know this is being recorded, but also just want to um, put this out there for all of you. So if you're taking notes, you can jot this down. But if you do have access to the digital platform, and it does not matter what grade level, I happen to click into grade one, but it works the exact same way at all grade levels. One of the things I would love for you to do is to click resources and then resource, excuse me, and then professional development, okay? Which is exactly why we're here today. So at any grade level, resources, professional development. And, and what I want to let everybody know is that <clears throat> right from here, there is an online training. It is called Wonders Basics. So if you have not checked this out, this is a great way to get started. Um, it is self-paced. You can do this on your own and really learn about all things Wonders. And then if you want to go a little deeper, there is a small group uh, time, uh, sort of self-guided, self-paced professional development. And because I know that for some of you, you might be new to Wonders. And so if you are new to Wonders, there's um, sort of these eight step uh, things to think about with implementation. So I just wanted to share with you kind of, like it says, how to learn how to use Wonders. And these three things are really, really helpful. The other thing that I want to let you know that's right here from the professional development page is classroom videos. There are hundreds, let me say that again, there are hundreds of classroom videos that you can access through a range, as you can see, I'm mouse, my mouse is moving right here through a range of different filters for foundational skills, reading, writing, whole group, small group. And these are real teachers in real classrooms, right, doing these lessons. So if you want to see an interactive read aloud or using the shared read, this might be also very, very helpful for you as well. And then the final thing that I want to just draw your attention to is right over here where it says get newsletter. So when you have a chance, maybe right after we're done with this um, Zoom uh Log in, again, resources, professional development, any grade level. Come over here and click on get newsletter. And yes, there are newsletters, but one of the things I want to make sure everybody has a chance to do is to join our Wonders community. You can see right here, it says register today. It's a two-step registration. Step one is you put in your work email and you create a password, the uh, system will send you an email link to verify that you are a real person. Um, always check to make sure sometimes that email will go into a spam folder or a junk folder, but click the link in that email and it will allow you to fill out your profile, your name, where you teach, what grade level, all of those things and then you will be admitted into the Wonders community. And this is a place 24 seven, right? Where you can ask your questions, where you can um, think of it almost like a, like a Facebook group, but it's, it's, it's run by myself and the Wonders team. And you can chat with teachers literally all over the globe um, who, have been using Wonders for many years. Some are also brand new to Wonders, but it's just a great learning space. Like it says, a Wonders user community. You can also access additional free 
resources and videos, um, additional Zooms and webinars from many of the Wonders authors as well. So I just wanted to take a moment to let you know about these ongoing free professional development resources that you can take advantage of as well. So resources, professional development, you've got this resource library of trainings, of videos, but then come over here to the side, click on get newsletter, be sure to register for that Wonders community. And then if you scroll down, hey, there are newsletters. You can subscribe to the newsletters that support your copyright. Um, Today, we're really focused on Wonders 2023. Um, if you want to view any past newsletters that are really helpful as well for your ongoing professional development. So I just wanted to make sure we definitely had time to cover that and talk about that. And so now I want to get into uh, the rest of, of the training, of course. So give me just a moment here. Let me close a couple things on my on my desktop. Okay. All right. So we're going to start by going into the resources. And one of the main resources that I want to talk about today is the reading writing companion. All right. And I'm just going to click over here into unit one of grade one. And we're going to kind of compare the lower grades to the upper grades. So I'm going to use first grade kind of to represent um, kindergarten uh, and first grade. This is a key component, right? So in kindergarten, you have 10 units um, that are organized into three week uh, units. So every three weeks is a unit. Um, in first grade, you have six units, right, that are six weeks long, and that is similar through the upper grades. Um, however, in grades two and above, um, those six weeks are organized into two-week tech sets. So week one and two is tech set one, weeks three and four is tech set two, and then week five is a one-week tech set, and then week six just like in first grade, is a spiral review. So let's sort of take a look from the lens of first grade. Now, kindergarten and first grade do have an extra special unit zero known as Start Smart, which is incredibly important for letter recognition, for teaching your routines uh, that you'll be using. But I want to go right into the table of contents here. And you can see in unit one of kindergarten, but also in first grade, you have some start smart pages, right? And those can be used during those first three weeks, sort of getting to know your students, building those classroom routines. But I'm going to go here into first grade, unit one, week one, right? And I'm going to start here right at the very beginning. Now, let's start this train by letting you know that at every grade level, Okay, kindergarten on up. Every tech set, whether it's a one week or it's a two week, is organized into a tech set that is anchored by a knowledge building essential question, just like you see here. There are videos, there should be collaborative conversations in kindergarten and first grade, introducing a couple of oral vocabulary words. But very quickly, one of the things I want you to remember at all grade levels, Wonders is taught at a perky pace. We have to keep that instruction moving. So whether it's a five-minute mini lesson or a 10-minute mini lesson, we want to keep that instruction moving. And don't be afraid. Y'all, we all have one of these, right? Most of us. Um, and there is a timer on our phones. And don't be afraid to set that timer for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes for following what is in that teacher guide. You'll also notice here at all grade levels an opportunity to not only talk, but write. Kindergarten, you might be drawing pictures. So thinking about those collaborative conversations, this is really about building background knowledge. Another tool that you're going to find at all grade levels that begins your tech set, so day one, right, is you just want to think about what are our goals for the week or 
for the two weeks. And so there's always this opportunity for setting goals through these very simple student I can statements. So we start the week thinking about what I can do or what I know or what I think I know. And then at the end of the week or end of the two weeks, we come back and support what I have learned. Now, in kindergarten and first grade, you come to your shared read. Now, of course, what you're not seeing is the explicit, systematic, foundational skill instruction of how we learn to read English, right? That includes phonemic awareness, phonics, high-frequency word instruction, and of course, starting in first grade, even spelling as well. So we have that direct explicit instruction coming right out of my teacher's edition. And then in kindergarten and first grade, they come to this shared read that is again, <coughs> excuse me, that is again organized around that essential question for knowledge building, but also, as you can see here, unit one, week one of first grade, we're focused on short A, right? And so students are reading with a pencil. That's another good sort of mantra or saying is not only do we teach wonders at a pretty perky pace, we read with a what? A pencil. So we circle, we draw, we talk. So here I am in the digital version. My students have the print version and I can model I'm going to choose this little marker, circle and read aloud a word, right, with a short A such as cat, and I could circle the word max, or I could circle the word can, right? I could circle those words um, on the page. And then notice here, I could practice, right? It'd be appropriate in kindergarten or first grade to practice maybe some, some letter writing or to practice writing a word with short A as well. And so again, they could be drawing pictures, citing evidence, but we read with a pencil. And as we go through this, you're going to see underlining, talking. So it's very multimodal, very engaging instruction, but this is for the purpose of practicing and applying those foundational skills that they've been exposed to. Then something very special for kindergarten and first grade, you're gonna see opportunities for writing practice. Now, kindergarten, this is gonna show up in about unit five, unit six, okay? Once we've got enough letters and words to, to put together into a sentence, but right away from the beginning of unit one in first grade. So really, again, look at this multimodal instruction. Look at the red words, right? Just like my shirt. Um, talk, listen, underline, draw, right? We want students thinking about what it means to just write a good high quality sentence, capital letter at the beginning, period at the end. And in kindergarten, we'll be thinking of some very basic concepts of print, like that in English, right? Words go from left to right from, and we read from top to bottom. Um, and then again, Notice the handwriting lines for students to practice as well. But first, they're going to talk. They're going to write, underline, and stretch. So that leads me to our third mantra or saying in Wonders is that if we read about it, we will talk about it, and we will write about it. So on day one and day two, we're really teaching and modeling using this shared read. And so... Day one was really just, do I get the gist, underline, circle, looking for those foundational skills, looking for my high frequency words. But notice here on day two, what does it say? It says reread. This is now following a close reading protocol. You will have this in your teacher's edition, red, read, green, reread. Your students have it in their reading, writing companion as well at all grade levels. So when we reread, we're going back into the text to, to think critically, right? And to help build and teach and model comprehension. So notice the graphic organizer is right here. Reread, share, write. And I don't expect, let me say this too. 
this is not a workbook. This is not something for students just to do independently. This is really a shared reading experience for students to perhaps draw pictures at kindergarten, but they're you're modeling. So they may be copying from you, the teacher, but you are using this as really that teaching and modeling tool for those, for those skills and strategies. As I keep thumbing through, right at the end of day two, we have read the shared read, We've gone in and done that close rereading of the shared read. We had that one, that lesson on what makes a good high quality sentence. Now notice what it says, write about the shared read. Because what do we know? If we read about it, we're gonna write about it. Um, and so we really are asking students to first look at a student model, but you know that saying is not just read to write, we're gonna read and then we're gonna what? We're going to talk and you can see that clearly here so before and and they're not really necessarily here writing about the shared read they're they're writing about what they noticed about this writing and again you've got some sentence starters that's a great scaffold there to help students write about the text then we move from teaching and modeling on days one and two into our anchor text and our anchor text is from that literature anthology. Now, kindergarten, those of you that teach kindergarten, it's the reverse. We actually start with our literature big books on days one and two, which is that authentic anchor text. And then we move into the shared read. So it's, it's just the reverse of what we just talked about. But in grades one and above, we move from the shared read to the anchor text. And again, right, you have an opportunity to respond Notice the red, that sort of what's the gist? What is the story kind of about? What is some of that evidence citing those page numbers? And again, in kindergarten and first grade, we're just teaching students how, what does that even mean to put a page number and to cite evidence? But then we're going to go back after we've read that selection, we reread, right? And we follow another instructional routine known as talk, cite, write. Right. And so we're going to talk about it. We're going to go back. We're going to go back into the story, not rereading the whole selection, a page, maybe a couple of pages. We're going to cite that evidence, drawing pictures, using words, and then we write about it. And then, of course, at the end of day three, if we've talked about it, we've Read, we've read about it, we talked about it, and now look at here, we write about it. So again, now, hopefully, in, in first grade, students are being a little bit more independent. They still have that checklist, right? But they, again, beginning of the year, they're going to need that teacher support. Then in kindergarten and first grade on day four, I'm already up to day four, we move to our paired selection. Now, kindergarten, your paired selection is in the back of that literature big book, but in first grade, it's right there in that student anthology. And so after we read that, we come into our companion to reread the paired selection. And again, think critically, underline, talk, draw, write, okay? And follow that instructional routine. What did I say earlier? Talk, cite your evidence and write about it. And then finally, on Thursday, Friday, right, or day day four, day five, you move into from red read to green reread. Ooh, look what it says here now. Blue, integrate, right? Research and inquiry. And so you have an opportunity on the last couple of days of the tech set to really dig in, have that opportunity to connect the learning, right, that essential question to science or social studies topics. So again, there's a tight integration of both social studies and science within Wonders as well. Also, come day four, day five, not only do I have research and inquiry projects, and those don't necessarily have to be independent. Those can be with a partner. That can be also, of course, at K1 whole group, um, but also. Notice here a couple of different activities. You could choose to do both. You could let students pick. You could direct students, but you have an integrate to make connections, which is again, talking, coming back to that essential question and relating 
what we've learned and what we've read to either science, social studies, or fine arts. Here in first grade, we've been learning about getting along at school, and now we're looking at a song, the ABC song. How does this relate to things that Jack could do at school, right? So here at school, we can sing the ABC song, and so we're making that connection. Also, you have your show your knowledge culminating tasks, right? And so what did you learn about school? What is um, maybe the same or different from the characters that you read? And so they're thinking about all those stories, right? They've had their big books, their interactive read alouds, the shared reads, the um, anchor text, even the leveled readers and decodable readers have all been about school. So this is sort of a culminating task for students to show their knowledge. So that's sort of a week at a glance through the perspective of the student tool in kindergarten and first grade. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go into an upper grade. So I'm going to use grade four, and this will be very similar to what you'll see in second, third, fourth, and fifth grade. So once again, I'm going to go to my resources, resource library. I'm going to just scroll down a little bit. I can see right from the get-go those key components like that literature anthology and of course that reading writing companion. So I'm going to go to unit one, text set one. Now notice I didn't say week one, I said text set one because when we look at the table of contents for second, third, fourth, fifth grade, you have three text sets. Do you remember what I said? Text set one is weeks what? One and two. Text set two is weeks three and four, right? It's a 10-day lesson plan, right? That's kind of nice. And then text set three is a five-day, just a one-week lesson plan. And the reason why it's shorter is because the text we are reading and rereading is either going to be poetry, which is very short, or it's a Time for Kids magazine article, which again is shorter than the lengthier anchor text. You will also see in your companion opportunities for that extended genre process writing. There are two projects here, as well as, well as week six, which we know also in first grade, which is an opportunity for spiral review, connect to science and social studies, and also reflect on our learning. So I'm just going to start here in fourth grade, right, at the beginning of this text set. Does this look familiar like we saw in kindergarten and first grade? Absolutely, right? Just like I said, at all grade levels, one week or two week text set is anchored and tied to this knowledge building essential question. So here we're saying, how do people respond to natural disasters? This is very appropriate for what's going on, especially here in the United States, because we've seen this in Hawaii. Have y'all heard about that? The fires uh, in Maui, on the island of Maui. So it's very relatable, right? And so whether a natural disaster could be fires, it could be flooding, which we've seen also in California very recently. Um, but also blizzards, snowstorms, probably don't have that too much uh, where you guys live, but um, natural disasters, earthquakes, right? Hurricanes, tornadoes, how to be prepared for that. And very quickly, right? We're teaching at a perky pace. We got a video, we got a background video we can use, but also an opportunity for students to engage in collaborative conversations, right? to talk and sort of get some of that language out there. And students can be working with partners, but also just sort of responding whole class. And from what I'm doing as a teacher, maybe putting up on the board, they are adding that into their companion because what we read with a what? We read with a pencil. We are not just sitting there watching as stu students are engaged both not only through listening and speaking, but with writing as well.
Okay, so now when I turn the page, just like you saw in kindergarten and first grade, every text set begins with a my goals page. Those very simple, student focused, I can statements, and they can rate themselves, sort of shade in these chevrons, one, two, three, four. And then at the end of the two weeks, right, at the end of the 10 days, they come back to this page and reflect on what they have learned. Now, the biggest difference in K-1 to grades two and above is the shared read. Because in kindergarten and first grade, that first shared read was a decodable text. It was all about applying my phonics skills and those high frequency words to a piece of text. But here in second, third, fourth, fifth grade, the shared read, write this down, is a piece of short, complex text. So it's very short. Like if we just turn the page here, we can see it's just three pages. But again, you can see through all of my annotations here that are all over the page that we, again, are reading with the pencil. We are marking up the text, circle, underline, draw a box, make a note, right? And even digitally, I can click and I can type on here, right? So you might be adding that digitally, right? Students, if students have a Chromebook, an iPad, any kind of digital laptop, they could be doing this digitally with you, right? Um, or you might be using the digital and the students are pencil paper, right? Now, once again, I want to zoom in a little bit on the instruction. So let's take a look. I'm going to just look at one page, right? And zoom in a little bit here. Look in that margin. Do you see that red instruction? So on my first read, now guess what? There is audio here digitally, but I really love to, because it is a shared read, to read this maybe chorally, um, partner read it, especially at the beginning of the year, I might read it. I might read, I, the teacher, I might read the first paragraph and then we might whole class read the next paragraph. I like to vary it up and switch it up. What we don't want to do is say, okay, you read the first paragraph, you read the second paragraph, you, you know, popcorn reading, not good, right? But we're just, we are either um, sort of listening or reading to it, but this is the teach and model, right? And so I go through on day one and I just do that red instruction, right? So we're going to underline, we're going to circle, we're going to draw a box, we're going to make some notes about natural disasters. And this one's about how the world changes, you know, and weathering and erosion. So again, this has a great connection to earth science as well. And I go through and I do that instruction, right? Following my teacher's guide. Notice there is down here at the bottom some green reread, but I, that's not for today, right? Not on day one. Then I do at, on day one, the one thing I do do is after the selection, I introduce vocabulary. Now, I will say this. If you are teaching students where English is not their first language, right? It is very appropriate to do the vocabulary and, or at least introduce it very quickly, right? Perky pace before the selection. But what the goal is, is to really just allow students to see the vocabulary being used in context. Notice it is highlighted here in the selection, right? Words like alter, collapse substantial, right? That high level academic vocabulary. But then after the selection, you do have that explicit vocabulary time. And notice here, even from the digital, if I click on the highlighted vocabulary words, it opens up the visual vocabulary card, right? Which has audio support. And of course, that define example ask instructional routine. You've heard me talk a lot about routines already, both in kindergarten and first grade, but those routines continue all the way up through second, third, fourth, fifth grade as well. So that's really, really uh, important to note. So 
those and I can just simply click, right? And get sometimes a video, right? Audio and define it in kid-friendly terms, use the word in an example, and then ask that question. Now, when I ask that question, that doesn't mean I'm gonna take up 20 minutes to let every single child you know, give a response. This is a whole group activity, but then also students have this right there in their digital dashboard or in their digital ebook to respond to as well. And then I also follow up with a vocabulary strategy lesson, right? Very important, not just memorize the words, but what is the strategy around that, that, that vocabulary uh, that we're learning? And so whether it be multiple meaning words, context clues, Greek and Latin roots, um, that word study is very important and, and taught explicitly. Okay, so day one and day one, teach and model, build that background, work through that shared read together very quickly, and make sure you've covered that vocabulary. Now on day two, you have a series of very quick, short, sort of 10-minute mini lessons. Here we have a strategy lesson. I do, we do, you do, right? Some quick tips, some talking stems. Um, because this is expository text, we have a quick mini lesson on diagrams and headings, which is a text feature. And then the big chunk of day two is our comprehension skill, compare and contrast. Again, it starts with what is compare and contrast? That's the I do. I read that to my students, right? Then, and don't over talk it. Don't over teach it because this whole thing is about compare and contrast, right? Then you move right into the we do, finding text evidence. Let's go back into the text. Let's see if we can see these examples from page 13 and 14. And then the y'all do, or sort of we do together. I know it says your turn. It's not, it's not done independently, right? But it can be done with a partner, maybe with some teacher guidance support, filling out this graphic organizer that's right here in their companion to make notes, to cite evidence, based on going back into the text and it says looking at page 14 and 15 and comparing the fast and powerful section and looking at comparing and contrasting volcanoes and landslides. Then, right, so we've spent 10, 20, 30 minutes really diving back in to the text. And what we want to end with is then after I've really had those that teaching time is going back and looking at these reread or author's craft, right? The green reread questions that you see here at the bottom. And these can just be done orally, right? Um, but, and, and together whole class, but it's really about exposing students to that sort of deeper levels of thinking. These are a little bit more cognitively demanding questions. And they're all about analyzing what did the author do? How is the author making the text work? So day one, teach and model. Day two, dig in, teach and model, going through that rereading, right? Part of that close reading routine. And y'all, I bet you know it, how we wrap up day two. If we read about it, we what? That's right. We write about it. And so if we take a closer look at this page, let me zoom in a little bit respond to the reading. Use your notes and text evidence. You guys, where are their notes? Where is all that text evidence? Right here, right? All they have to do is literally turn a few pages back. That's what they've been doing. That, that alone, letting them know it's not a secret. You've got all the answers right there in your companion. And if they don't know where to start writing, look at this scaffold right here under the quick tip box. You've got these sentence starters. Understanding the cause of Earth's changes helps, dot, dot, dot. This might be the three sentences I get from my students. That's okay. Now, eventually, students will be like, do I have to use those? And you say no, right? Because you know, some of your students who are ready to do it and, and know what they want to say can write 
um, their thoughts, but making sure they're citing that text evidence. Another opportunity at the end of day two, and again, it does, it's, it's, I, I don't want to say it's totally optional, um, but you don't necessarily have to do these every single week or every single text set. Just like you saw in K1, there are research and inquiry projects connecting to either the science or social studies topics. This is another great way to have that real world writing. So, of course, we've been talking about natural disasters and how do we stay safe. And so this is asking students to prepare a little poster or pamphlet of how do you how how are you prepared to be safe during um some kind of natural disaster that so the students can choose floods, landslides, earthquakes, sandstorms, right? Um whatever that might be. And they can work with a partner or work independently gathering sources and creating this. And you, they sort of start at the beginning of the text set, but then it's not really finished until day nine, day 10. So that's built right in, right? And, and that's, again, going to that higher level of thinking from read, reread. Now that's a way to integrate all of this, all of the knowledge that they're going to be gathering throughout the two weeks. So day one and two, teach and model. Now we're going to, what's happening here? Oh, okay. There we go. Um, day day three and day four, we are into just reading our literature anthology. So I would put my companion away, right? And in second, third, fourth, fifth grade, you've got that literature, that rich, authentic text. So I'm going to go into my table of contents here. You can see unit one, text set one, which is weeks one and two, are longer expository texts still connected to that essential question, right? What do you know? How do you, how do you prepare and respond to natural disasters? We're reading about earthquakes, right? Again, very topical because these do happen. And we just had one in California recently. But you have two full days just to, just to work through. This is a lengthier text, right? This is not something that McGraw-Hill wrote. This is a real trade book, something you can find in your library or on Amazon. And so I might break this up into two days. And again, all of the teaching and the questions and the prompts are for that just surface level, that initial read, reread, are in your teacher's edition. So day three, day four, going through and doing that just read, right, read, but also an opportunity to summarize what I read and use that exact same, look at that, graphic organizer that I first taught and modeled, right? Because what's our focus skill this week or this tech set? Compare, contrast. So all deeply, deeply connected. Now, of course, on day five and day six, I'm going to come back into my companion and reread the anchor text. And let me zoom in on this because these, again, are more author's craft level questions. We are analyzing now. So day three and four, surface level, I've got all that great questioning in my teacher's edition. And then day five, I'm going to come here and I'm going to do this deeper level question, really focusing on how does the author use photographs, right, to help you understand what it's like to live through an earthquake. And what's our routine? That instructional routine, we've said it before. Do you remember that important routine? Talk, cite the evidence, and write about it. So this is that close reading protocol of sort of first going back, rereading page 11 from the anthology. So I would go back, or I can simply type in the page number down here. I could say page 11, hit enter. So we're only reading this short little paragraph on page 11. And after we talk about what we just read, we put some notes, right? We draw some pictures maybe using words and pictures to cite that evidence, and then we write about it. Then I turn the page. I have a second question, right? And we're, we're going to page 13, and we, talk, we reread, and we talk about it, cite that evidence. We've got some, some talking stems, some sentence starters, but also inferencing 
is integrated throughout the entire program. So this is a great little call out to think about how we have to put that information together. And y'all, that's day five, just doing those two questions, taking the time to walk through that protocol. Now that's not all we're doing, right? We're also doing our grammar, our writing, phonics, whatever. But that's the bulk of what we're doing here for my reading comprehension time. Then on day six, I have one more deep level reread question following that talk, cite the evidence, write about it. And then I wrap up day six, just like I did it on day two. If we read about it, we write about it. And so again, look at those directions, use your notes, use your text evidence, right? Why is this important to understand how earthquakes affect people? And so they have all those notes, all that information and in those graphic organizers, but also still supporting, helping these students write with these sentence starters. And at the beginning of the year, you're probably doing this with students. You don't wanna do it with them all the time, but you eventually scaffold because yes, day one and two, you're doing a lot of support and work, teaching, modeling, doing it with them, sharing of ideas. On days three, four, five, and six, we do want to sort of release a little bit. So it's not so much I do, we do, and it more turns into a we do, you do, hopefully, right? Again, that's going to depend on the level of your students. That's going to depend on the time of year, and that's going to depend on even the genre of the text. All right, so now we're up to day seven. So on day seven, we're going to read the paired selection. So if I come here right into my literature anthology, my main anchor text was earthquakes. Well, my paired selection is a shorter, right? So just one day to read it, day seven. I'm reading an expository, excuse me, a personal narrative about weathering a storm. This, this is a personal story of how they weathered a flood. And then on day eight, I come back into my companion and we reread the paired selection, which is also printed right here in my companion. And again, teaching students how to think critically about a text, to draw a box, circle, underline, make those annotations, which y'all, annotations, citing evidence, that's something students can take into middle school, high school, college even, right? That's a skill that we use even as adults. And so on day eight, we also have opportunities to talk, cite, and write about that and have those mini lessons around that paired selection. And then like we saw, let me go back to my two pages, like we saw in kindergarten and first grade on uh, the end of the week or end of the text set on days nine and 10, we have these activities to integrate, to make connections, right? To science, to social studies, where they have to think about the different texts they've read and how that knowledge builds and connects to the world around us. Also an opportunity to show their knowledge, right? So the sort of a culminating task, this could be sort of an alternative to the assessments that we provide um, where students here are creating a public service announcement. Maybe they're gonna write a blog, maybe they're gonna make a poster where they are sharing information. For all of the show your knowledge tasks, there are rubrics and checklists. Let me show you that. So going back online, if I just simply come here and search show your knowledge rubric, and hit enter, here they are, right? So we were on unit one, tech set one, right? All about responding to natural disasters. Well, here is a rubric that you can share with students, right? Let me zoom in a little bit on this. That you could share with students that provides a checklist, but also provides that rubric of how you can grade that particular um, activity if you wanna use that as well. All right, now, of course, after we integrate, show that knowledge days nine and 10, then I turn the page, we're ready for the next two weeks. But remember days nine and 10 or day five, 
you know, in, in K and one is also an opportunity to do those progress monitoring assessments. So those assessments, right, live here under the assessment category, or you can come up here. What I really recommend is doing the digital assessments that live in the online assessment center. So <laughs> you can see here, based on my calendar, I'm on unit one, week one. In my online assessment center, I will also have that progress monitoring. So when I come down here, I see a folder it says grade four. Yours might say grade one or grade uh, three. PMA, that's your progress monitoring assessments. So I can see here unit one, weeks one and two. And here's a little tip. Come all the way over to the little three dots called your options. And this is where you can assign it, right? If you want to preview it. Now, one of my recommendations, the first couple of times you do a digital assessment, I always like to do it with my students. So my students are following along on their device, whether, and if every child has a device, you could do it whole group. If you have limited devices, you could do it at a small group table, but just sort of showing them, oh, you click on start assignment. Then you're going to get the instructions. And especially for my younger students, just teaching them like, here's the passage on the left that you have to scroll through the passage to read, right? And think about this text. Now, this is a fresh, cold read, but it's still connected to my theme or my essential question. And then how to mark the answer, go to the next question. So these progress monitoring assessments, as you can see, only have 10 questions. They're very short, right? but there is sort of part one, right? Or part A, there is one cold, fresh read and they answer uh, some questions around it. And then as I go through, again, I'm just sort of showing you different item types, right? So here we have to choose different headings that support the information. And look at this, click on the sentence that uses compare and contrast. So again, assessing that comprehension skill. But then in part B, for questions six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, you have a new cold, fresh read. And then again, different types of item types. Sometimes it's choose all that apply, part A, part B. This mirrors the type of assessments, national standardized assessments that we see here in the U.S., all, again, every single test item tagged to a common core standard, right? Choose two, but it's not your typical A, B, C, D choices, right? So going through, they can do that. That's exactly what it looks like for the student. Um, but when I go into that online assessment center, finding that assessment, click on the three dots. You can assign it. Uh, if you wanted to edit, you can. Uh, most elementary teachers do not uh, have a need to go in and edit the test. But if you, if you for some reason needed to, you could do that as well. All right, I know we're coming sort of towards the end of our time, but I wanted to kind of give that very basic walkthrough. Remember that through the digital platform, not only do you have all of those uh, materials we went through, like your anthology, big books, you know, the companion in a digital format, but here you can see I'm on unit one, week one, day one. Remember that every day, every grade, you have a ready-made lesson presentation. So if you want to teach digitally, if you have a projector, smart board, Promethean board, you can use this as a ready-made slideshow that has all of the print, the videos. Here's that. Um, How do people respond to natural disasters? Here's that ready-made ba background video that's done for you. And all of those slides in order that include the visual vocabulary, that might include games and activities, right? All built into that slideshow. You have your printables. So these are your worksheets that you can print right from here, as well as seeing this week's games. These are all automatically on the student's dashboard. Um, and again, you have this for every single tech set. So I want to stop there. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this very brief overview.
but I want to take a look at some of the questions that we might have, and I might be able to talk through some of these. So um, let's get into some of the Q&A questions. And then, sure, is there anything in the chat box that I need to address? Not really. I think there was one that said, can you, <laughs> can you tell us about the pacing guide? But a lot of questions, I've directed them to the Q&A box and the Q&A box is full right now. So you can. Yeah, <laughs> we'll go through that. Yeah. And, and again, if it, well, I don't mind hanging on a few minutes extra to Thank answer you. these questions, but, but that pacing guide simply notice right here, I go up to the, um, the little search box, click on that little magnifying glass. And I would type in pacing guide. Very helpful because what I say, we teach at a perky pace, right? Everything has little chunks of time. And so there is a suggested lesson planning and pacing guide here. If I scroll down, you can see that Wonders is um, best taught at 120 minutes at kindergarten, first and second grade. So that's about a two hour time block. Now that is for everything, whole group small group, reading, writing, spelling, language arts, grammar, right? The whole thing. Um, in third, fourth, fifth grade, we have some choices. There's a 90 minute uh, block, there's a 120 or a very, very short 60 minutes. But you will see just looking at this, here's grade K, right? 120 minutes. So it's very personalized to the grade level and to the pacing. But lesson one would be day one, right? And you would really want to follow what we call that core pathway. There might be some extra things in the options box, but that core pathway. And this includes, as you can see, your reading time, your writing language arts time, and small group instruction. And I always love the fact that we give very specific ideas for what can be done at the teacher-led small group table and what can be going on around the classroom either as seat work independently by students or collaborative workstations, collaborative um, centers around the room. So you'll have this for every single grade level. That's that um, flexible uh, suggested lesson plan and pacing guide. And again, when I'm first teaching wonders, I use this pacing guide and I keep that handy dandy timer close to me as well. All right, into the Q&A box. I wanted to inquire about the differentiation activities. As you know, primary, yes. So at every grade level, thank you, Mara, for asking that. In my resources, I'm going to go to my resource library. Under the section called cards, or you could simply search, they're called center activity cards. And these cards are organized for each week of instruction or each text set. And there are three types of cards. There are blue cards here for reading stations, right, or centers. I love the fact that the front sort of has a ready-made anchor chart and the back has activities that students could, could complete with a partner. Then as I scroll down, you're going to see some green colored cards for writing, right? So you want to have a writing station. And again, these have multiple activities to differentiate on the back. And then your reddish or orange colored cards are for phonics um, word study. And these all connect to what you're teaching in whole group. And so these can be activities that you have around the room. So in addition to these, don't forget you have your ready-made <clears throat> practice book pages, those ready to go worksheets that can uh, allow students to practice. And then of course your teacher's edition provides differentiated teacher-led skill lessons, right? And so kindergarten, first grade, don't be afraid to do a phonics lesson. You gotta hit it again, right? Maybe reteach uh, using also your decodable readers, decodable passages, but also leveled readers if they're ready to do those as well. My students can read and understand what they hear and read yet have difficulty in speaking. So again, one of the things I would say that would help them is lots of collaborative conversations, turn and talk. But again, keep an eye on your timer. I want you to turn and talk for 10 seconds. Talk about this for 20, 30 seconds. Okay, come back to me. Use those sentence starters as almost 
talking stems. I would also bring your attention, and this is for everybody, to the, you heard me talk a lot about instructional routines. So in the search box, simply type in instructional routine handbook and hit enter. This is a key, 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 super, super, super important if you're new to wonders of how to really teach the science of reading in a very structured, routine base. Everything in Wonders is organized around a routine, especially at kindergarten and first grade. You have all those phonics routines, foundational skill routines. But also in this book, there is specific routines for speaking and listening. So I would draw your attention to that as well. So thank you for that. Um, is it advisable to encourage grade one students to keep writing even when they are getting? Yes, yes. Invented spelling, right? Some of the spelling might be wrong, but yes, just getting pencil down on paper, getting that handwriting practice, super, super important, right? So yes, don't be afraid. Even if the spelling's not perfect, they can always go back and correct it, but it's about getting their ideas and understanding um, that what I say can be written down. But again, also use a lot of support where they are. They might be copying from what you're showing them, especially on days one and two, modeling that writing, having that interactive writing opportunity. Yes, that is so important at all grade levels, not just grade one. Is the reading writing companion targeted at EL learners? No, it's really for all learners. You might need to scaffold or support in different ways um, Heba, um, but it's really for all levels of learners. If you're really looking to target for EL supports, here's another valuable resource. Everybody go to your search box, type in ELL, ELL small group guide, right? Hit enter. And there is a ton of support here for all of your lessons, both in reading and writing in that ELL small group guide. And of course, don't forget you have your EL leveled readers. You have a ton of EL supports. All right, going on, I've, no Oops. I've noticed that the literature stories are only online. Um, no, you can download an app uh, from your app store called the McGraw-Hill Portal. Um, but the stories are also in print, right? The literature anthology, the big books, those are print pieces. Now you may not have those. If that's something you're interested in purchasing, talk to your McGraw-Hill rep, but all of, all of the text, the shared reads, the anchor text, all are in print and digital format. Hi, Paul William, grade five. I know we teach a lesson in a week in every single aspect, reading, writing. Yeah, my question is how many hours a week is enough to complete a lesson? Again, look at that pacing guide, right? We really recommend at fifth grade, either a 90 minute uh, e English language arts block or even up to 120 minutes ELA block, okay? Um, Joelle, I would love to see phonics booklet and how it presents the lesson. Um, Again, I showed you really the, the companion that has the decodable. That's where you're going to go. Um, but there's not necessarily a phonics booklet, right? You do have phonics practice book pages, and you have all of the explicit lessons in that teacher edition. Can you please explain why not popcorn reading? Uh, Daniela, sure. It's really um, been sort of researched and talked about that it really does not benefit students because... If I'm not a strong reader, um, I'm only focused on that one paragraph that I have to read, and then they sort of check out. So uh, it's rather better to, when you share a text, to either chorally read it, um, echo reading, where I read a sentence, you read the sentence, or, or um, partner read, but um, not just having one individual read at a time is not as beneficial for building confidence, right? But also just overall ability to comprehend and, and understand and get the gist of a text. Um, Arwa Alhamadi, Al can reading and vocabulary be taught separately from writing? They can, you could separate things out and rearrange it. I just wanna say that writing is thinking, right? We're not doing enough writing and in wonders and even in the standards, everything is 
interconnected. Everything is integrated. So the old way of teaching was to sort of separate things out. But now with wonders, everything is very cohesive because what we read about, we write about, right? And we want to use the grammar skills we're learning in my writing when I'm writing about the story that I wrote, right? And, and using that vocabulary. Um, so of course you can do whatever you want, um, but that's, I'm just letting you know, that's not the intent of how the authors and the, you know, academic designers built wonders. It's not built to be separated out like that, okay? Uh, roughly how long would one lesson take at third grade? 90 minutes is, is typical. Um, and again, that can vary by, by different days. Thank you for that question. Um, could you further add regarding reading methods that are suitable? Yeah, like I've already talked about, right? Um, echo reading, chorally reading, partner reading. Um, you know, and if they are reading independently, maybe some silent reading. But when I'm teaching and modeling, I want to get those conversations that and that language out there because I don't always know what's going on in the brain when they're reading silently and they may not be comprehending all of the important aspects. Um, how does phonics connect with the science of reading? Oh my gosh. Well, that goes back to that instructional routine handbook, right? Everything we do in wonders, let me um and 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 again, if you're looking for connections and thoughts about science of reading, this is the tool, right? Because this does actually show you and talk about um, the research and the science. But you can see all of these routines are how I take what I know about the brain and what I know how the brain acquires language, but puts it into evidence-based classroom best practices, whether it's a phoneme blending routine, a phonics routine, that vocabulary routine. And let me zoom in a little bit deeper just to prove to you, right? So if I think about, look at this, for kindergarten, first grade, especially phonological phonemic awareness, what you need to know about phonological and phonemic awareness. So a, a quick overview, but look at this, citing, look at that, bulleted the research which is the science, right? And then how does wonders teach phonemic awareness? So that's now saying, okay, here's how wonders takes that science and puts it into the lessons. And then following that up with all of those very specific routines. So that is exactly how you'll see that science of reading connecting to those phonics lessons. So thank you for that. Um, using wonders, I think it's designed for Native American students, the Native American students. So I was wondering if you can modify for non-Native speakers. Um, yes, of course, it is absolutely probably first designed for students whose English is their first language. But um, that is where all of the EL supports, all of the EL instruction that is in the teacher edition. So look for those. All of that EL scaffolding is exactly for probably who your students are. So that's where maybe you really need to take a look at that EL small group guide, right? Uh, don't you think Wonders books need to be modified for ESL students? Well, there is modifications, right? It's it, Wonders is not an ESL curriculum. That's, that might be something else to investigate. Wonders is teaching English language arts, right? Um, but it is filled with depth and breadth of EL, multilingual learner supports. Um, new features that have been added to the platform concerning 2020 version. Um, nothing, nothing new uh, there, Xena. Um, there are, of course, the data collecting games, the data dashboard, uh, that might be new, um, but be on the lookout. And this is not just for 2020, but at all Wonders users starting in September, you will see the addition of some adaptive learning, which is centered around phonics, phonemic awareness for all students. So that'll be a nice added intervention, especially for those who are just learning English. 
days one and two, I would probably say anywhere from uh, 120 minutes for sure in K1, 90 to 120 minutes there. Um, how would you, does each unit identify pertaining to learning targets? Yes, in the front of your teacher's edition, there is a unit level overview for those targets. Look for the red check marks that really identify those targeted skills. Uh, can you kindly share how to model answers if there is this option on the platform? That's exactly what I was doing, right? Using the literature anthology or the eBooks to be able to circle, draw, highlight using those digital tools, right? So here I am in that eBook. And to so that you can do a little self-study, just click on this question mark and it talks about all the navigation and all of those interactive tools that you can use, all right? And if you need to see more, um, definitely, you guys, don't forget what I say at the very beginning, go into resources, professional development. Those classroom videos will show how to use the platform digitally. Um, Let's see, Nermeen Mohammed. I do I use the same sequence of questions with all students, or do, I think that varies based on your students. Do, does every child need every question? No, that's where you use your ability as a teacher to differentiate. You you have to know your students, right? Um, and that can vary based on the grade level, the time of year, the genre of the text. All right. Um, are digital assessments all of them available in print? Yes, they are, Charlotte. Absolutely. All units are designed for six weeks. Yes, except for kindergarten. That is correct. Um, yes, the assignments are aligned with a map assessment. So you will see a, a connection for that map growth. Um, so if you use map assessments, uh, that is something that you definitely can can use with wonders. Uh, just talk to um, the the people that you get the map test from, and I think there is some connections there. Um, please show how to measure the Lexile. Um, I don't, you know, wonders does not necessarily level or measure Lexile levels, but all of our all of our the assessments and the the reads right do have a Lexile measure. But just remember, that's only one measure. And Wonders really takes in consideration not only the quantitative, but the qualitative aspect of the text. Um, what is your advice for a new homeroom teacher in grade five? Oh my gosh, read the instructional routine handbook. Be sure you are reading the stories ahead of time for sure. Um, Yes, Wonders absolutely al aligns to the Common Core Standard. So when you go over here to your planner, uh, you can click on Weekly Standards, right? And you can see all the Common Core Standards that are covered, okay? Right from the planner. Thank you. Um, do, do, do. For non-native English speakers, it's harder to keep the suggested. I get that, you guys. So if you have to adjust your pacing because your students are not English first learners, that is perfectly okay. But that's also where you can really take advantage of the small group table. Maybe you don't do as much whole group, but you can target. And again, maybe the lessons in the core teacher edition, right, are too hard. Go into that EL small group, but maybe use the EL lessons for your whole class. That might be something you want to investigate. I cannot say enough about how wonderful the EL um, small group guide is how to assign games to students using a barcode they scan. I don't know anything about scanning a barcode. We don't we don't do that, Asia. That might be something specific to your school district. Um, all of the games and activities are already on the student dashboard. But if I do need to assign it, I can click on that cog and just click simply click assign. Um, there is in the professional development right, under digital help and under um, managing and assigning, there's some additional professional development about, around how to manage and how to assign things to students. So you might take a look at that. Is the comprehension book to practice with students? So um, if you're talking about the reading, writing companion, yes, that is, I do, we do with students. 
um, there is comprehension, you know, and, and uh, additional comprehension activities and practice book pages that could be done, you know, collaboratively or independently. Um, so are you suggesting to base most of the work on the literature selections? That is, uh, that is the core of what I'm saying. Um, I, I'm not saying, you, you know, use the practice book as, as needed. Right. That's exactly what it's for exposure. It's for practice. Your students, especially if they are non-native English speakers, need lots and lots of exposure and lots and lots of practice. So I would be providing that opportunity for independent practice, take home, homework, you know, using the games, using the worksheets, um, all of it. Right. <laughs> OK. Working through these questions. Uh, sorry to say that, but you haven't mentioned the practice book tasks. Yeah, they're, they're wonderful. Um, the practice book is absolutely, because I wanted to focus on core instruction today, but the practice book is exactly that. It is practice, right? Are these lessons repetitive? Yes. So all of wonders is, is spiraling is very recursive as well. Um, could you tackle the writing criteria since it's crucial? Um, yeah, so every day you have opportunities for writing. You have both short process writing. You have also have the extended genre process writing. And all of that, and those many lessons are right there in that companion um, as well. Can the reading and vocabulary be taught? So I think we already talked about that. Um, thanks for helping me kind of weed through these. Um, thanks again. But how... Can I get the books? If you need books um, for kindergarten, Reem, reach out uh, or Sharice might follow up with you. Um, talk to your McGraw-Hill representative to get those print components. Do the library resources have methods of teaching how to par how to paragraph? I mean, to yeah, that um, that is definitely part of, you know, in the reading writing companion, Right. We we saw that there is opportunities for those extended writings, right? So going through and that writing process, right? All of that is not only here in the student companion for drafting, edit, revise, to publish, but you have explicit writing support in your teacher's edition that you can do as well. You have two opportunities in the upper grades. You don't have to necessarily use both. Okay. Um, just try to get through a few more. Do you have any advice? Uh, do you advise ready to go test? For sure. I would definitely use any of the ready to go assessments that we provide. Um, where can we find those center cards? If you're still on here? Yes, absolutely. Resources, resource library, right? Scroll down. They are called under cards or if you know the name of a component, use that search box, right? Type in the word center activity cards, hit enter, and boom, there they are. So super easy to find those when you know the name of that component. And you, the last thing I'll say, right, um, can I access other grades? Again, Raheem, if you need access to other grade levels, um, that is something that you could get a license for. Do you have any tips on to get students' attention to help them with their attention span? Yes. Use your timer. Keep it moving. If if I'm moving at a perky pace, they got to pay attention because we're moving on, right? Um, so, yeah, that's definitely something that I would do uh, to keep them involved and keep their attention as well. All right. I know we're wow. You've answered like fifty-five over. questions, by the way. Fifty-five questions that it was like bang, 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 bang. I just want to thank you, Brandon, for staying thank over you. and answering all these questions. And all you folks who could have left, but there were about four hundred of you, three eighty-four now. But I saw like five minutes ago they were all here trying to listen and learn and find out. Thank so you. kudos to you. Thank you. And um, lots of great messages for you, Brandon. Everyone wants to say thank you for helping out teachers in this back to school period. We really appreciate you being here. And you've answered some great questions and sort of, I mean, I can see nobody decided to leave. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to say again, if you have more questions, if you need more help, 
remember I showed everybody how they can sign up for that Wonders online mm -hmm. community. Um, let me just share my screen one more time in case people are hanging on, right? So you go to your online platform, you go to resources, you go to professional development and click right here to the right where it says, get the newsletter. And not only can you sign up for the newsletter, but there is a direct link to register today for that Wonders user community. And that will be ongoing. And folks like myself and the entire Wonders team monitors that. So that's, please join, right? Because you're going to have more questions, or maybe we weren't able to get into some of the very specific things you wanted to know about today. And that Wonders community is the place for you to go and get that help and support. All right. Thank you all so very much. Have a great rest of your day. Thank and you so much, Brandon. I appreciate you. And and have the rest of the, have a good day. And everyone have a great evening then. Bye. Bye-bye.